I may be a self-educated man, but I am a man who has spent a lot of time um, trying to do my homework, figure out what was going on. I made a promise to myself on September 11th um, because I didn't think I was qualified to be able to speak to a nation um, or even speak to my neighbors about things that I didn't understand. So I put myself through school. Um, in the last year and a half or so, quite frankly, because my daughter disagreed with me on American history, I put myself through... Um, American history classes and I studied the early 20th century progressive movement. It is there that I learned that beautiful things can be extraordinarily dangerous. It's there that I learned that um, Goebbels in Germany actually said they lost World War I because of propaganda from the West. They studied American propaganda coming from uh, the progressives in the Woodrow Wilson administration. I learned that we had 150,000 per political prisoners in this nation because people spoke out against the administration and the war. I'm going to show you the beginning of something that should scare the living daylights out of you. It is propaganda in America. The National Endowment of the Arts is now holding conference calls. I want to lay this out for you, and then I'm going to bring a guest in. One of the guys who was on the conference call felt awkward about this whole thing. He's, a, he's an artist, and he felt awkward and decided he was going to tape the conference calls. The only reason why we can bring this story to you with any credibility is because he did the brave thing, probably destroyed his career, at least he'll never get a dime from the National Endowment from the Arts, and probably won't speak to any other artist again, or they won't speak to him, because he has betrayed the movement. Here's the first email that came in from the National uh, Endowment of the Arts. It said, this, money, uh, this Monday there is a conference call for arts-oriented marketers and producers to discuss the President of the United States We Serve initiative that I thought you might like to participate in. A call has come in to our generation, a call from the top, a call from a house that is white, and a call we must answer. Please join uh, these people, blah, 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 as we heed the president's call to action this summer, united we serve. Then there was a reminder email that went out. It said, with the knowledge that ordinary people can achieve extraordinary things when given the proper tools, President Obama is asking us to come together and help lay a new foundation for growth, focusing on core areas of the recovery agenda. Health care, energy, and environment, safety and security, education and community review, uh, renewal. Quote five, it is time for us as a group of artists, producers, promoters, organizers, influencers, uh, marketers, taste makers, leaders, or just plain cool people to join together and work together to promote a more civilly engaged America and celebrate how the arts can be used for a positive change. No one knows our communities better than we do. No one can inspire as much as we can. We have a unique role to play in making service accessible and fun to those who are not accustomed to volunteering. We know that engaging all Americans in service must, uh, uh, means we must expand the idea of service. Go to quote two on email two. Already you are helping us to reframe the image of volunteerism. And quote three, the United We Serve team, in collaboration with the White House Office of Public Engagement and the National Endowment for the Arts, is hosting a conference call. Well, let me give you, before I give you all of the audio and introduce you to the guy who was brave enough to not only tape it, then then bring it here, there he is. Before I bring him on, let me give you a taste of what was said in this conversation. Listen carefully what was said um, by a Yossi Sargent from the National Endowment of the Arts, Your Money, Please play. Uh, this is a brand new conversation. Conversation. Uh, we are just now learning how to uh, really bring this community together to speak uh, with their, the government. Um, what that looks like legally, uh, we're still trying to figure out the laws of putting government websites on Facebook uh, and, and, and the use of Twitter. This is all being sorted out. We are participating in history as it's being made. So bear with us. 
us as we learn the language uh, so that we can speak to each other safely and, and, and we, can, we can really work together to, to, to move the needle and to get, um, to get stuff done. Your tax dollars have funded artwork that you may or may have not seen yet. This has just happened, but already artwork is out. Um, <laughs> and they are learning the language so they can speak to each other safely. I'm going to introduce you next to the man who received these emails and more of the conference calls and coincidentally some artwork that happened within two weeks of this phone conversation. Of course, there's going to be plausible deniability, kind of, on this one, um, because they're learning how to speak the correct language to be able to talk to each other safely. That is a quote from a conversation that we're going to replay for you here in a second. There is a propaganda arm now, engaging artists and the art community using your tax dollars in propaganda. Uh, Pat Corielsch, he is a contributor on Breitbart's Big Hollywood blog, a filmmaker, and an art community consultant. Um, Pat, when you received these emails, did any alarm bells go off uh, in your head? Yeah, I mean, you have to take the, the, the take uh, into account the time that this was sent. I mean, this was at the very beginning of August, and uh, the town halls had gone nuclear. Uh, in the email, it states to speak to specific topics, and I just, that was really surprising to me. Okay. I was, because it was uh, very because... surprised to see because it mentioned the White House were, was teaming up with the NEA and art communities, right? Is that, is that what? Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. Ex exactly. I mean, you have, you're basically inviting out the art community, people that they potentially fund, the National Endowment for the Arts, that potentially funds these people. Okay. And uh, you're having them talk about specific issues. And, and you know, these were very, this was a hand-picked group. They were, we were told several times throughout the conference call that uh, we were selected for a reason, that these are the people that helped Obama come into, into the office. They, they used the Hope uh, poster and, and the Will I Am song as specific examples of how this group played a role in getting this man elected. So um, to me, I'm like, I'm seeing this hand-picked group and I'm seeing them talk about, uh, wanting us to talk about specific issues at a time that these specific, specific issues are being vehemently debated and it just didn't seem right to me. The National Endowment for the Arts is called the National Endowment for the Arts, not to use the arts. And it's a very subtle distinction, but it's it's very potent distinction. He, the, the uh, in the, um, and I don't know if we have this uh, piece of audio cut, I would like to encourage you to pick something, healthcare, education, environment, the four areas the administration has identified as areas of service, then apply your artistic creativity to it, bring them to the table. Again, the NEA is honored to be working with you. What does that mean to you when they said that? Well, uh, to me, it's, uh, it, it, was, it was steering us in a certain direction. It was uh, telling us to um, make sp art specific to those areas. And um, when, you, uh, when you had the crowd that we did have on that phone call, uh, there's only going to be one result of that. Who was on the, and, phone, who um, was on the phone call with you? There was gallery owners, venue owners, uh, musicians, poets, actors, um, uh, all walks of life from the quote-unquote independent art community. Okay. You know, it, and... Could, hang on, I want to play this. Do we have SOT 3 here about the goal of the phone call through this group? Do we have that? We don't have that one. Um, let me uh, quote this. A goal of this phone call... Could we get those, please, and we'll play them again tomorrow? The goal of this phone call uh, through this group, we can create stronger community amongst ourselves to get involved in things we are passionate about, as we did in the campaign. But to continue to get involved to these things, to support the president, but to do things that we are passionate about, but also to push the president and to push his administration. That's a quote. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, um, it's, it's a little bit scary. I mean, the quote that you played earlier when they said uh, uh, getting this group together to speak with the government, uh, that's a choir I'm not uh, <laughs> ready to hear. It, this is, if you look throughout history, history is riddled with that being a bad thing.
with art coming together with the government to speak to the people. I, I, and, I can't you know, believe you said honestly. Earlier, I, I, you know what? You you are in the art community. Um, you're with the filmmakers and everything else. I mean, you know, Sean Penn doesn't have a problem with uh, Hugo Chavez, but I can't believe that there are not more artists, more people that are willing to speak out and say, you know, freedom and the freedom to s of speech, the freedom to create is much more important than any one administration's uh, agenda. I mean, they would all scream fascism if Bush would have tried this or anybody else would have tried this. Where are people's principles? Do they have any? You know, I've been getting a really positive response to the article and uh, to this whole issue. I, uh, on, on a Big Hollywood, I've gotten a ton of comments. I think it's From close to the art community or from, from the left? or from the Tea Party tinfoil hat people, as others like to call them? Well, Big Hollywood is an art community. Okay. Um, I, I believe it's a right-leaning art community, but um, uh, they, are, they are out there. Okay. And I know because I've been, been, been reached by them throughout this whole ordeal. Um, I want to play again, and then we'll, we'll come back. Um, I want to play again the brand new conversation. America? Listen to what they're saying. National Endowment of the Arts. Was the White House on this phone call? Uh, yes. Okay. White House is on the phone call. This is the National Endowment of the Arts. Listen to what they say carefully. This is just the beginning. This is the first telephone call, the brand new conversation. Uh, we are just now learning how to uh, really bring this community together to speak uh, with their, the government, um, what that looks like legally. Uh, we're still trying to figure out the laws of putting government websites on Facebook uh, and, and, and the use of Twitter. This is all being sorted out. We are participating in history as it's being made. So bear with us as we learn the language uh, so that we can speak to each other safely and, and, and we, can, we can really work together to, to, to move the needle and to get, um, to get stuff done. This is beyond useful idiots here. This is um, amazing. They know exactly what they're doing. When we come back, I'm going to show you some artwork that maybe it coincidentally came out two weeks after this phone call. That's next. It's an amazing thing to see that your, your president, your White House, your government is trying to trick you. Use your tax dollars to change your mind. It's called propaganda. Um, the people involved in a conference call, including the White House, knew that this was on the fence, if not outright illegal. They knew for sure that this would outrage you if it would ever get out. Well, it did because of the gentleman who is on with us, Pat Corielsch. He is. Uh, he was brave enough to. Did you just set? Did you just set a little tape recorder next to the conference call, the speakerphone? It's called a uh, Apple uh, Voice Memo. <laughs> okay, good. I didn't know. Um, all right. So. Um, Gosh, I feel like a grandfather all of a sudden. Um, all right, so you recorded it. They didn't know that you were recording. I don't believe so, no. Okay. I, I, I believe that they might have recorded it themselves. I'm not sure. Sure, but they're not going to release it. Um, this is one of the things that they said, NEA for propaganda. Here it is. I would encourage you to pick something, uh, whether it's health care, education, uh, the environment. You know, there's a, there's a, a four key areas. Uh, that, the, that the corporation has, uh, has identified as the areas of service. And then my ask would be to apply artistic, you know, your artistic creative, again, creative communities, um, utilities, uh, and, 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 and bring them to the table. Um, uh, again, I'm really, really honored to be working with you. Okay. Um, what kind of art are we talking about? What, kind of the, what are the different kinds of art that we would see come out of something like this? Uh, you would see posters, uh, potentially music, um, art installations, uh, gallery shows, touring gallery shows, and they uh, would be shirt designs. They would be paid for by tax dollars to the NEA. Not necessarily, and I, and that's one thing I want. I do want to make clear: they did not say, you know, specifically speak to a certain policy, and we are going to pay you guys to do this, but. Um, you're on the phone basically with the largest funder of the arts in the United States. Right. And you are an art community that gets funded by these people. Right. I mean, the, 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 that conversation shouldn't be had. Right. Simple. It's a simple topic. 
Okay. If they weren't implying that, what would be the problem then? Why would they have to be? Could you play? Could you play again, please? The the uh, the soundbite where they were talking about we have to be careful with our language here. Why would they say this if this is just the beginning? This is the first telephone call of a brand new conversation. Uh, we are just now learning how to uh, really bring this community together to speak uh, with their, the government. Um, what that looks like legally, uh, we're still trying to figure out the laws of putting government websites on Facebook. Uh, and, and, and All right. Why, why would they say that if, it was, if they weren't implying that there was some give and take here? You know, that's a question for them. Uh, they've been uh, avoiding comments for quite some time now. I mean, it's been out for a little over a week, and uh, I don't believe they've gotten one comment from the Washington Times, and I believe mm -hmm. they denied sending out the invite, which yeah. I gave you. So, which, is, uh, which, is really, which is really weird, uh, because we've seen yeah. it. Um, uh, let, me, uh, let me ask you this. Play uh, NEA knows how to make a stink. Uh, try to explain to me what you think they meant by this. Take photos. Take video, post it on your blogs, get the word out. Uh, like I said, this is a community that knows how to make a stink. Um, and do it. Do it within your town. Do it nationally. Uh, call on other producers, marketers, publicists, art, uh, you know, artists, uh, people from within our community, uh, and, and get, them into, get them engaged. What do they take videos of what? What does he mean this community knows how to make a stink? Uh, I, you know, once again, it's kind of an implied uh, uh, steering in a certain direction. I mean, you're talking to a crowd that supported Obama. You're talking to a crowd that helped that hope poster. You know, and I, and I listen to that, and you know, honestly, it, it, I feel kind of bad to have to bring this out, but facts are bipartisan. And I want the people that were on that phone call and others in our community to know this is not what the government was meant to do, and this is not what the National Endowment for the Arts was meant to do. They are there to promote the arts, increase access to the arts, and be a leader in education in the arts, not to push issues. Well, they, they'll say that thing. I was just, they were just educating. Um, uh, tomorrow we're... They were we're, <laughs> Yeah, that's what they're doing. Um, we will, uh, tomorrow we're going to follow this a little, uh, a little closer. I'm going to show you what happens when the art community and government uh, combines. But let me just show you a couple of things. Now, uh, Patrick... Um, this artist was one of the guys that was on the uh, f was on the phone call, but we don't know for sure if these were a direct result. But they just coincidentally were uh, created a couple of weeks after that phone call. Um, yeah. go ahead. Here's one of them: healthcare for I, all. I can't see the art. Okay. Okay, healthcare for yeah. Okay. And then there's the sick. It has it. Sick shouldn't equal broke. It's a rock the vote. Um, Demand yeah, health care. Both of those were from Rock the Vote. Okay. Both of those were from Rock the Vote, and they were on the phone call. Coincidence? You think? Coincidence? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I, I don't think so, no. I mean, the, the announcement came out uh, several days, or excuse me, about a week or so after that, and it was pretty clear. They basically said enough is enough, uh, universal health care, and um, the timing is just, it's too much of a coincidence. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it, and this person was also part of the pitch team as well for, for the art, uh, for the uh, community, so. Patrick, thank you for your bravery. Thank you. I, I mean, I don't know how popular you're going to be in the art community now, but God bless you, man. Thank you for your bravery, and we'll talk again. We'll be right back. We have been trying to find the answers to what's going on in this country, and it is not good. But you know what? I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that I'm wrong. But until we start getting answers, this is all I got. Demand answers for this. How did Van Jones get his job? When did this change from communism happen? We played the tape of him in March saying unbelievably communistic things. Who at the NEA is working for agenda art? Since when does the NEA encourage artists to further not only the agenda, but the president and his administration? Who's paying for that? Whose idea is that? Who is the propaganda chief now? Question with boldness. When you find the truth, no matter what it is, you like it or don't, hold to the truth. And like this last artist just did, when you find it, you speak without fear. Because they're counting on you being afraid. Have no fear. The truth shall set you free. From New York.
good night, America.